Perhaps you've seen one of my favorite television shows, MASH. Uh, it starred Alan Alda. And um, in that show, a recurring theme shows Hawkeye and BJ drinking from their still, that they are distilling alcohol, in particular they're distilling gin, uh, and then they're drinking it to make themselves happy. They sometimes joked about putting lemon drops into their gin and, and stuff like that. Well, gin is a tea uh, made from ethanol and water to, in which uh, certain fruits and vegetables are uh, allowed, to, or allowed to infuse into the alcohol. Things like juniper berries and lemon peels and cinnamon stick and cardamom and those sorts of things. Anyway, what I'm going to show you today is not how to make gin, because that actually happens to be a federal offense, but how we distill ethanol from some solids. In other words, how do we separate a mixture that's a solid and a liquid, where what we're interested in is the liquid. So what I have here is a round bottom flask. It's a 100 milliliter round bottom flask. And I've put some magnesium shavings down in the bottom. Magnesium is good because it reacts with water and it will dry the ethanol. We're going to uh, do everything really fast, but imagine this is a cooking show. And so if we waited longer, uh, we could affect that transformation that we're interested in. So I have some ethanol here, and I'm going to pour it into the round bottom flask. And again, the round bottom flask already contains some magnesium shavings. And being a round bottom flask that's 100 milliliters, you can put 50 milliliters or so in. You never want to fill the flask more than half filled. And the reason is, as it becomes more than half filled, the surface area or that's exposed to the air or exposed to, um, well, exposed to the air gets smaller and smaller. And you have a greater probability of bumping it, which means to superheat it. And when it superheats, it goes all over the place. It just literally bumps. So that's. Um, so it's a good idea not to go more than half filled. If you have much more than 50 milliliters to distill, either get a larger round bottom flask or distill it in, in more than one part. In other words, pour in half of it and then come back and, and after you've distilled some off, put in some more. Okay, so we have uh, an adapter and we have the thermometer adapter. And this is a thermometer. It, uh, you have to make sure that the thermometer ha goes up to at least as high as your uh, liquid boils if you don't go high enough. So in other words, this is 110, it goes up to 110. Uh, ethanol boils at 78, so that's going to be fine. But if we were distilling something that boiled above 110, you'd have to get a thermometer that's above 110. Otherwise, you run the risk of breaking the thermometer. And breaking a mercury thermometer that way is a bad idea. OK, so you put this all together, and you adjust the thermometer so that the bulb is even with this side arm here, so that the mercury bulb is even with the side arm. That looks a little low. It's not absolutely crucial that it be exactly at a certain point, but you want it so that the, the bulb is going to be bathed in the vapor. And I'll show you that when we start to heat it up. OK, so um, this is a condenser. And I've connected some uh, Tigon tubing to it. One end goes to a water source. Uh, cold water is important to use here. If you use hot water, you're not going to get the effect you want. And then the other end just goes to the sink to dump out. So water comes in through the bottom and goes out through the top. And that's always the case. Whenever you have a condenser, you always run the water in through the bottom and out through the top. And what a condenser consists of is it's a tube. You might be able to see down this tube. Okay? And then jacketed about this tube is uh, more glass, and the water runs in the jacket. So the vapor, what we're trying to distill, is going to go down the middle. And then water, cooling water, is going around the outside in what we call the cooling jacket. So we'll assemble that part. And then another adapter. And down to our receiving flask. And sometimes it takes a little bit of adjustment to get everything working right. Now, if you have clamps available, and they make these plastic clamps that clamp these joints together, that's a good idea. And you can also grease the joints if the grease is not going to contaminate your material. So if, if the grease is not soluble in your material, you can go ahead and grease the joints. Um, but that's not really crucial. I think if you have everything put together fairly tightly, everything's going to be fine. So I'm going to connect, the again, the bottom end of the condenser to the cold water source with a piece of, through a piece of plastic tubing. And now I can start to apply the heat. Now, when you do distillations in the laboratory, in fact, when you heat almost anything in the laboratory, it's a good idea not to use a Bunsen burner. Bunsen burners are fine for doing things like flame tests. But in general, an open flame is dangerous um, because you can ignite the vapor. So what we're going to use is something called a heating mantle. And this is a heating mantle. Basically, it's, it's a resistively heated coil. And it's a much safer way to heat, the, the, heat our um, still pot here. And it's connected to 
um, a controller, so it's a good idea not to plug these directly into the wall, because if you plug this directly into the wall, you're running 115 volts through it, and it's going to get really hot really fast. So what this does is it sort of turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off, and that's how you can control the temperature. You can also use something called a variac, which just decreases the amount of voltage <coughs> excuse me, that you run through this thing. So, and those are big blue, uh, almost like electric train controllers. 